Good morning. Welcome to Unity Baptist Church. How are you all doing this morning? Well, are you wet? Yes. Nah. Oh, it's great outside. I, I was going to wear my poncho while I preached today, but, but I'm not going to, so maybe next time. So, uh, announcements for you all. If you picked up a bulletin, there's a whole bunch of good stuff in there, but I did want to call your attention to a couple things. Um, we are going to have a breakfast fellowship, first one of the year, next Sunday morning. Uh, and then also, if you want to be on the prayer list, the prayer call list, or you want to be eliminated from the prayer call list, there is sign up at either table um, to sign up for that. So if not, you can read all the rest of your announcements in your bulletin. I will tell you this, there is going to be no evening service tonight, uh, and there is no children's church today either. So I, I know I'm full of all the good news. So but is there any other announcements that I may be missing? Uh, there is going to be preaching, well, so-called preaching today, so, yes, yes. Okay, Saturday at 9 a.m., Christmas decorations are coming down. I think we should leave them up here all year round. I mean, who, who's, who's involved? For, okay, see, Christy, oh, you, see, just leave them up. It, no, I'm just kidding. 9 a.m. on Saturday, if you can come help, that would be wonderful. Are there any other announcements? All right, let's stand up and we'll greet one another.
I'm going to invite our usher, ushers forward as we take up our tent and our offerings. And Brother Bob Culberson is going to come lead us in our offertory prayer. Brother. <laughs> i got to wait for everybody to sit down. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love and your care that you have for us. Father, how you provide for us. And Father, as we take up this offering, that it might uh, provide help for those that need it, but mostly the help of knowing who Jesus Christ is. Father, how we celebrate his birth this uh, past work, this past week. Father, we just um, pray that, um, that that good news of joy, that good news of this young baby, might be spread throughout the world so that people might come to know you in a more real and personal way, so that they might have that hope of, of eternal life. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to give. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Pam and Susan. Sorry, technical difficulties. But let's go to the Lord in prayer as, as we center our hearts and our minds on him this morning. Reading from Acts chapter 2, and it says, or Acts chapter 4, and it says this. And when they had summoned them, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot stop talking about what we have seen and heard. Dear Heavenly Father, God, God, as we enter this time that we sing praises to you, God, God, may your name be on our lips constantly so that we cannot stop talking about what you have done in our lives by sending your son, Jesus. Just bless our time now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Eric? All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's stand and sing, there's a song in the air. <laughs>
Heaven's child. child. Mary sweetly smiled 
because they knew this was heaven's child. Mary's little baby boy, Joseph's pride and joy. Still they wished the world would see that he was so much more. This was heaven's child. This was heaven's child. In an earthen stable, wrapped in glory meek and mild. Joseph wept with wonder as Mary sweetly smiled because they knew this was heaven's child because they knew this was heaven's child heaven's child Thank you, Mary. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Generally, Father God, God, I pray that you, uh, you just speak now as you open your word, Lord, and Lord, that your voice is heard, uh, and God, that we respond to it. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I hope you all had a Merry Christmas, enjoyed the snow outside, and sitting by the fire, drinking hot chocolate and all that good stuff, right? Everybody was out in shorts and t-shirts playing golf and just running around, right? Good, good time. So um, before Christmas happened, my brother um, from Springfield, the middle one of us, uh, came down and got to spend some time with him. And so, um, but let me tell you this, growing up, he was the one that beat me up the most because he was six years older than me. The oldest one was 10 years older than me, and he just had to look at me, and I would run in the corner and be fine. So, uh, but this, this one who was six years older than me, him I could annoy uh, j just a little, and so I'd, I would poke fun at him and things like that. But uh, he was a really, really good wrestler. I will say this. He, he was a good wrestler until... Some things happened, but he, he was a very good wrestler, uh, and so he used to practice his wrestling moves on his little brother. You know, I mean, come on, why not, right? So, um, you know, Bob knows all about these wrestling moves, you know, so I got the, I got the good old-fashioned uh, half Nelson, sometimes the full Nelson, just, just depends, you know, where he kind of twists you, and then get he'd put his chin in my back and dig in there as hard as he could, all that good stuff, right? Um, until... I would whine, and I would, or I would uh, say something like, "Hey, I have to use the bathroom." Uh, you know, um, ultimately, ultimately, I I would uh, surrender or give up. Same exact thing. We, um, you guys ever? When I was a kid, there was this game called Mercy. You would like lock hands together, and then yeah, you'd all do that. Um, he thought that would be fun to play with me too. So, uh, and he'd always win, and I'd always give up, and I'd always surrender. I would always say. You, you're too good at this. Uh, I can't handle that. Until we played a game of the minds. And we played this game called Stratego. Has ever ever, ever played Stratego? Oh, it's a great game. Uh, basically, you try to hide your flag and surround it by bombs and other numbers and try to do that. Um, well, I won at Stratego, and I forced him to surrender. It was awesome. And then he beat me up afterwards. But, I mean, it was, it was really, really good, though. I mean, you know, I, it felt really good because I made him surrender. I didn't have to surrender. Well, today, this morning, I want to talk about that word surrender and how we, as followers of Jesus, need to surrender to him and ultimately surrender to him in every area of our life, okay? And we'll get to that point. But we're going to look at three texts today. Uh, 
I don't know why God gave me these three texts, but they're, they kind because of, they really don't tie together, but they do sort of, okay? So the first text we're going to be at is in Matthew chapter 8, is where we're going to be, Matthew chapter 8. And again, we're going to look at, at these first couple texts are, are kind of the negative side of not surrendering to Christ, not giving everything out. And the power went off again, and that's awesome. Uh, it's, it's just because it's me. But if you have your Bible, Matthew chapter 8 is where we're going to be, and we'll see if Kevin can pull that back up real quick. Ooh, that looks pretty. Anyways, so we're talking about surrendering today, <laughs> and we're in Matthew chapter 8, and let, let, me, let me read that. We're going to start with verse 18, Matthew chapter 8, starting with verse 18, that says this. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to depart to the other side of the sea. Okay, so people are rushing after Jesus, and he says, hey, let's go to the other side of the sea. Then a scribe came and said to him, came and said to Jesus, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes, the birds have air, uh, sorry, the birds, have, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So Jesus is saying, hey, all these people are surrounded, let's go to the other side of the sea. And so he starts to travel, and a scribe comes up to him and says, teacher, I will follow you everywhere. And Jesus says, the foxes have holes, the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Ultimately saying, hey, this isn't going to be easy. This journey of following me isn't going to be easy. And you're going to have to surrender some comforts. You have to surrender some comforts. So he tells the scribe, you know, you, are you ready for this? Are you really ready to surrender, to be a follower of mine? And then it goes on in verse 21. It says, another of the disciples said to him, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and allow the dead to bury their own dead. Another disciple comes up and he says, well, Jesus, I'm going to go with you, but first... Let me go take care of this business over here. Let, let me go bury, bury my dad. Um, and when you read this in the original, um, his dad wasn't dead yet. It was, it was still, he was going to go and just wait until the first day of the day. Let me go do this, and then I'll follow you. But, but Jesus, you know, I, I got to do this, and then I will follow you. Verse 23 says this. When he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. Okay? Now, in the text, his disciples were the 12. The 12 got into the boat with him. That means no other people, that crowd that was surrounding Jesus there, got into the boat with him. And when I read that text, I, I, I always scratch my head and wonder, why? Why? Why didn't they do that? Why, why didn't they get in there? I mean, come on. They, they flocked to Jesus because, you know, all those miracles. Why didn't they do that? And I think because of the two answers that Jesus gave to those, other, those two people who wanted to follow Jesus. Where Jesus says, you know, it's not going to be easy and let me go first. Let me be your first option, not your second option. See, surrendering is not going to be easy, okay? Surrendering to Jesus isn't easy and isn't comfortable, isn't, isn't, isn't just the, you know, warm and fuzzy all the time, okay? Surrendering takes from us and ultimately we just give everything to God. Okay, so first, first text there. Jesus want, is just, all these people flock around him, and he ends up with his 12. After telling two people who want to follow him, yes, we'll, we'll go follow you, but first, let me do this. Flip over to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, 
Another, another example of someone who says, Jesus, I will follow you, but I don't know. Mark chapter 10. We're going old-fashioned, no screens. So let me, get, let me get out the scroll and we can read it. Okay, Mark chapter 10, starting with verse 17. And it says this, as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know that you know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your mother and father, father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I have kept all those things from my youth up. Okay, so Jesus says, you know all the commandments? And, and this, this guy says, I have done all that. You know, I haven't committed murder. I haven't committed adultery. I, I, haven't, I haven't defrauded anybody. I, haven't, I mean, since I was a kid, I've kept all that. I mean, I was a good, good kid. You know, he's, you know he, I can picture him just putting like a halo on his head like, oh, hallelujah. Okay, he, he's saying, look it. I was good. I did all of that since my youth. Verse 21. Looking at him, Jesus felt a love for him and said to him, all right, realize this, Jesus loves him. That, that, that's a key. One thing you lack, go and sell all you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. All right, so he tells this guy, yeah, you've kept all those commandments. That, that's great, and I love you so much. Go and sell all your stuff and give it to the poor. Go, go, go give it all, all that you have. Just go and donate, donate, me, donate that and just come and follow me. Verse 22, but at these words, he, the man, was saddened. And he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. He wasn't willing to surrender at all. See, he, he wanted to do all the good things, and he, he said he kept all the good things since he was a youth, but he didn't want to give that one aspect of himself to God. He wanted to keep it for himself, and he wanted to use it for himself, and ultimately fall into that trap that we fall into very, very often called pride. Right? I mean, come on. We, we're, we are, by nature, self-centered, prideful people. Right? I mean, we, we want what's ours. Okay, Okay, God, I'll, I'll give you this little portion of, of, of my life, but, you know, the rest of this I want to keep. Or, you know, I'm okay sharing this with other people, but I want to keep, keep everything else to myself. I really don't want to surrender it all to Christ, okay? And I, I have an example. I, I show this to the youth, sort of, uh, but I want to show you a quick little example of, of what, I, what I mean, Okay? So each one of these bags represents an area of our life. So this bag, isn't it so pretty? Jimmy Brown, I stole these from you. Uh, these, these, this bag right here, this represents, we're all at church, right? This represents our church life, okay? Uh, that, each one of these bags represents a little portion of our life, you know, because you know, when we come to church, we have, we have our, our church life, right? Then, we have our family, correct? We all love family. We just got, we're hopefully spending some time more with family, but we have our family, okay? And sometimes those, those bags touch each other because our family sometimes go to church with us. That's just how it goes. Then... We have our friends. Oh, and sometimes those bags kind of touch each other because hopefully we're friends sometimes with some of our family and with our church 
friends. Hopefully, the, you know, hopefully those bags kind of inter- intertwine and touch each other a little bit. Then we have this bag. Uh, this is going to represent work. For you who are retired, this is an awesome bag. Okay, but, but this bag is work or school, because that's work. Um, and sometimes that, that touches our friends, and, and sometimes our family bag, and sometimes our church bag, but sometimes work is, can be a little separate, right? I mean, it can, it's, it's just how it works. Um, and then after that, we have our financial bag. Okay, so that's, that's kind of our finances. Uh, that kind of sit there, maybe, stay. All right, our finances. Um, and hopefully that, sometimes that's affected by some of those other areas. Sometimes, you know, we try to keep our finances to ourselves and don't want to talk about that. But uh, that, that's our financial bag. Then we have our play, our play bag, right? I mean, we all do some sort of playing, like whether it be movies or shopping or whatever, whatever it may be. We, we have our own little, little area there, okay? Stay. All right. <laughs> no! Okay, so anyways, there's bags that are sitting there. Uh, I grabbed too many bags. Then we have this bag, which represents our spiritual life. This would be our spiritual life, would, would, would be this bag. This isn't going to fall, okay? It's going to stay right there. The hard thing is this. Sometimes this bag is way over here, and we keep those bags over there, and we say, well, God, you can't have my family you can't deal, when I'm in my family bag, I don't, I don't want you to be, I don't want to deal spiritually with my family bag. Or with, when I'm with my friends, I want to just be me. I, I don't want to be spiritual. I, I, don't, I don't want to be like that. Or when I'm, when I'm dealing with my money, I really, I don't want to deal with the spirituality of really what I want to do with, with my money. I want to keep that bag separate, or when I deal with my play, or my friends, or, or whatever it may be, my work, I want to keep all those separate from my spiritual life. Does that make sense? Sometimes we have these little boxes, and, and we go into those little boxes, and we forget that God wants us to surrender all our boxes to Him, and ultimately, when we do that, this is the cool thing, I'm going to be a magician, when we do that... Okay, all areas, all bags, all boxes, whatever you want to say, go into here. And all boxes, every area of our life, now we look at from a spiritual perspective. We look, from, we look at it from a God eye perspective. We don't look at it as a self-centered, this is my box, and I'm going to do whatever I want to do in this box. Instead, we look at it from, okay, God, you're inside this bag too. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do with my family? What do you want me to do with my friends? What do you want me to do with my playtime? What do you want me to do with my finances? What do you want me to do? Because that's exactly, the text that we read is, is exactly what happens when, when we want to keep our little portion of that bag or that box to ourselves and we don't really want to completely follow God. We don't want to completely surrender to God. We want to keep our own little thing and say, well, God, you can have this portion of my life, but don't meddle with that portion of my life. When, God's, when God died on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, he died for all areas of your life. All right? He died so that he can, he can come in and he can take effect of all areas of your life so that you, as a follower of his, can go and tell others about him in all areas. All right? So that when people can, can look at your life and they can say, man, that guy's got it going on. Okay? Because they love Jesus. I'm going to be honest with you. About two weeks before Christmas... I was in one of my own little bags. I was. Um, without too many details, I put two, two new tires on my car in May. 
why the, those two new tires I put on in May were bad already. And I chose to go in my little box and be prideful and selfish and ultimately be mean. <laughs> I was. Uh, if my wife was here, she was, she'd be, she's in the nursery, but she'd be shaking her head and she's like, yeah, you're lucky I didn't beat you, okay? But again, that's, that's, that's just how it goes. But I got in my own little box and I looked at that pride and, and, and unfortunately, the circumstance went ahead of spiritual. The circumstance affected the spiritual. The circumstance affected my life as opposed to letting the spiritual affect the circumstance. Does that make sense? When, when we let God into those boxes, he takes control and we let go. We surrender. Now, is it always going to look pretty? No. Is it always going to look like how we want it? More than likely not. But we can let go of those things. Okay? I want to I read one more text, and, and this text is perfect because this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is Philippians chapter 3, starting with verse 7. I want to set this up just a little bit. This is Paul, all right? Paul was a Jew of the Jews, okay? He was perfect when it came to religion, I mean, he, he, his, his resume was perfect. Any church, any Jewish church, synagogue looking for, they were to hire Paul because everything was perfect about Paul. And Paul says in verse seven, just like we get wrapped up in our pride, Paul got wrapped in his pride and he says this, in, starting with verse seven, Philippians chapter three, it says this, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Moreover than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and have count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may obtain to the righteousness of the dead. Not that I've already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so I may lay hold of that which also I lay hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as laying, as laying hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on to the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul says this. He says, my selfishness was there. It was. I mean, I was a good Baptist boy. I was at church every single time the doors were open. I, I knew the hymns that, that when we sing in songbooks and the screen wasn't there like we're going to sing here in a little bit. I knew. Worthy, worthy of worship? Yeah, page three. Amazing Grace, 333. You know, I, I, mean, I knew all that. Man, when, when the pastor said, hey, let's turn to Matthew chapter 7, I was there before he was. I mean, man, I, I knew it all. I had all those things. Man, you know, I had the nicest house on Johnson Street. I mean, I drove the nicest car that Hosick Motors has to offer. Man, I, I, had, I had the hottest wife that, whoo, I tell you. And I had the best kids. They all behaved every single moment of the day. I mean, it, it was awesome. I mean, look at, look at that. I mean, look at me. Look, look at the, I had, I had all these friends. Man, I had the best job ever. I won't say I worked just one day a week because technically I wake, work two days a week, Wednesday and Sunday. So I be, got Robert beat on that. But um, I worked all, I mean, come on. It was, it was a cushy job and I got paid good. You know, I, I did all that. Man, at my finances, my, my bank account, whoo. 
My bank account was there and it was booming. Well, yeah. And, you know, I, I guess I kind of have a relationship with Jesus. Doesn't that sound like us sometimes? <laughs> Doesn't that sound like us more than often? Man, you sure saw what I got for Christmas. Even as adults, we're like, yeah. And we don't care about telling people about Jesus, about the love of Jesus, the knowledge of Jesus, knowing that, that Jesus is everything. And like Paul says, I count all that stuff as rubbish. I count all that stuff as loss compared to knowing Jesus. Compared to knowing and having a relationship with Jesus, all that stuff I surrender over to him because Jesus is Lord of my life. And because I want to know him more. See, Paul flipped from, from this self-centered person to this person who was Christ-centered in every area of his life. All right? He was holding up this bag and, and he said, you know, every area of my life is inside of here. Here you go, Jesus. You take it. And you do what you want with it. You, you do what you want with it. And, and above all, and, and I think if Paul was standing here, he would say this. Above all, let me be able to proclaim and talk about how awesome you are, Jesus. I, I, don't, I don't care about... I don't care about my bachelor's degree. I don't care about all that. I don't care about all that stuff. All I care about is the fact that Jesus is in my life and that Jesus affects every single area of my life and that I've surrendered every single area of my life over to him. And I will tell you this, church. I will tell you this. When we do that, okay, and I say we because I still struggle when we do that, you, you can't imagine how Satan's going to fall when we see lives changed because we are willing as the church to go out and proclaim Jesus in every single area of our life. People are, people are going to be hearing about the grace and the love and the mercy that Jesus bestowed upon us and bestowed upon them. May we as the church, and, and, and I can't say this enough, with me, as we as the church, may we surrender all. We can sing about it, we can talk about it, but we actually have to do it. And may we, as the church, followers of Jesus, be willing to surrender it all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, God, simple message, straightforward, exactly what I needed to hear, God. God, may I be willing to surrender it all. And God, I pray, as a church, as followers of you, may we be willing to surrender it all. Not hold anything back in our lives, God. God, but let you in every area. And God, when we do that, may you guide and lead. And God, may we see lost souls one for you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did at that cross. We don't deserve it. God, we're just moving this place. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're gonna stand and we're gonna sing page 301 in your hymnal, softly and ten tenderly. Listen, the altar is always open. If you have a decision to make, you come. You don't have to talk to me, but may we be willing to surrender it all.
thank you all for being here this morning. I, I pray that you have a blessed rest of the holiday season as we celebrate New Year's. And, and really, I pray this New Year's that each and every one of us is willing to surrender it all to Jesus. Because I, I believe fully when we do that as Unity Baptist Church, we're going to see this community right over here, one for Jesus. All right? May that be our prayer. Thank you. Erica? Okay. Um, I do not have the music for Emmanuel, and it is not in the hymn. I was wondering if we could do the chorus of joy, unspeakable joy, for our closing song. Would that be all right? Would you like a minute to take that one? Just the joy, unspeakable joy. Okay. All right. 